Chapter Five of Our Little Jewish Cousin. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Our Little Jewish Cousin by Mary Hazelton Blanchard Wade. Chapter Five. The Jews of Long Ago. May we go to Levis, Papa dear? asked Esther, when the evening meal was over and the children were gathered with their parents on the house top. Mamma said she was willing, but we must ask you. I think it would be very pleasant for you, and I know Levi and Rebecca like to have you there. Yes, you may go. I knew you would say yes, and now we want to ask you something else. Will you tell us some stories of long ago, before our city was destroyed? I suppose you would like best to hear about the children, Esther. Of course, Papa. They were very happy. Their parents were as wise and tender in caring for them as they are today. When they were yet quite young, they began to study the books of wisdom of our people. They went to school every day. There was one saying. They heard over and over again. It was this: Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. Our houses are not for us alone. Their parents said, and taught them this beautiful saying: Let thy house be wide open, and let the poor be the children of the house. There were many pilgrim feasts in those days. People came to Jerusalem to worship in the temple. And to take part in the sacred festivals, yet it is said that not one of these pilgrims ever felt the need of entertainment. The houses were open for all. Only think of it: it was a common thing to walk along the street and see the curtains hanging in front of doors. This was a sign that there was still room for guests. Some people went so far as to say, "There should be four doors to every house." Then travellers would be welcomed from every direction. What kind of houses did the people live in? Asked Solomon. There were small cottages where the poor lived, for there were some, of course, who did not have much of this world's goods. Then there were the houses of the middle class. These were built of brick or stone, and besides these, there were the elegant marble homes of the rich. Built around beautiful courtyards, the houses had the roofs paved with stone or brick. They were made to slant down a little, so as to let rainwater run through the pipes into the cistern below. These cisterns were needed in the old days just as much as now, on account of long months when no rain fell and the country became so dry. A railing was built around each house top. In this way, it was made into a comfortable resting place for the family and their friends. It was cool and quiet. We follow the same fashion," said Esther. "Yes, but in the old times, I suppose it was used even more than now. The older people often went up there to pray. Meetings were sometimes held there. It was also a good place to watch for the enemy." The rich people often had wide and costly stairs built up to the roof from the street. You can imagine the boys and girls running over these stairs in a game of chase or hide and seek. How did the people of two thousand years ago furnish their houses? Asked Miriam. Very much as we do now, they had couches, chairs, and tables, and there were often many soft cushions for the head and arms. The people used candlesticks and lamps exactly as we do, but I promised to talk most about the children. They took part with their parents in the family prayer every night and morning. They washed and prayed before every meal. After it, they gave thanks to God for His kindness to them. As each Sabbath came around, the children looked forward to it as though they were going to welcome a king. It was a time of rest and joy. When the father came home on the eve of the holy day, he found the house trimmed up as though for a feast. The Sabbath lamp was lighted. The table was spread with richest feast the family could afford. 
before doing anything else the father blessed each child with the blessing of israel the little ones felt that something beautiful and holy was about to take place they were quite willing to give up their play for the next day they would have something better you have taught us all these things papa said esther i know it my dear but i tell them again so that you may see we have not changed much since the old days the children looked forward for the feast days with joyful delight it is hard to say which they liked best they must have loved the feast of the dedication said miriam why miriam on the account of the many candles it is so pleasant to watch a great number of them burning at once yes children always love lights and brightness the first evening of the feast a candle was lighted for each one in the house the second evening two were lighted and so on to the eighth but the feast of esther brings more sport said solomon you're just like every other boy solomon you like noise and fun said his father but think for a moment children must not the feast of the passover have been the greatest one of all it was then that the father repeated the whole story of the children of israel to his listening children they loved to hear it it seemed to them as though they were really following the chosen people in their wanderings they looked upon moses receiving the commandments from heaven as they shut their eyes they saw in their minds the waters of the red sea parting to let the children of israel pass across in safety then again coming together the waves closed over their enemies and destroyed them father you tell us the stories as well as any one possibly could said solomon i do my best solomon but in the old days the children were brought nearer to the heaven by their visits to the temple think of that glorious buildings and its walls shining with gold it seems as though i could see the throng of the white robed priests and hear the blast they sounded on their silver trumpets listen a chant from the psalms rings through the great building it sounds like heavenly voices esther's father closed his eyes and became silent the children were filled with awe as they sat quietly beside him i wish i could have lived in the long ago thought esther the temple must have seemed like a part of heaven brought to earth now we will repeat the night prayer and go to rest said the father end of chapter 5 read by lambda